Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the ProTrek PRW2500-1 uh, ABC watch, I'll call it, because it has all the ABC features, altimeter, barometer, and a compass. Uh, I will start by giving a general walk around of the watch. I'm not going to go too deep into the specifications of anything, only because I'll put those in the show notes, and if you're looking at this watch, you probably have a good idea of what those specifications are already. To start, uh, I will jump to the band here. Uh, it is a resin or plastic style band. It is rather comfortable. As you can see, you have little grips on the underside for both. And while I'm on the band, you'll notice that there's a little flare at the end. It's some extra material. What this does is when you close the watch and it's on your wrist, that keeps it from opening up. I don't particularly care for that only because I have a really small wrist and I end up having it stick up like that and this part's up too high and it's difficult to slide this over this. I will show you that it is possible but it's a little annoying to do. Uh, while we're on the back here, there's the back. Uh, you'll notice that it's a stainless steel backing with a plastic outer area. I, I was worried about this um, catching on, you know, the hair on my arm, but it was a concern that I didn't really need to have because this is actually very comfortable. Um, I do have another Casio watch. I have a G-Shock Atomic Golfman and it has a titanium back. Uh, so stainless steel, it's a slightly cooler metal than if you have a titanium backing. If, if you've ever had that, you'll know what I'm saying. Uh, also on the back here, you'll notice this is a really large watch. So to help it sit comfortably on your wrist, there are these little plastic flippers that keep the watch band and the watch situated nicely. All right, so while we're on this side, don't mind me, I'm just banging into the camera. While we're on this side, you will notice the buttons, your altimeter, actually it's the compass barometer and then the altimeter. But if my camera decides to focus, there we go, you will notice on these buttons there is slight stippling or texturing. Uh, this is to help you get a grip in, you know, inclement weather if your hands are wet, sweaty, what have you. Uh, the checker, well, it's not even checkering, it's up and down striations, uh, in my opinion, is not quite as aggressive as I would like for, uh, like, a watch with a specific use case of outdoor usage. Uh, I wish it was a little deeper, and if we swing over to this side, the mode button or the changing functions button, uh, those are actually scratches, so they're not something that uh, is put onto the watch, but you'll notice that it's actually smooth. Uh, with no texturing at all, which I didn't particularly care for because if you did it to one set of buttons, at least do it to the other set as well. And because this is an ABC watch, we'll focus again. Come on. You've got your adjustment button on the front and the light button. Uh, you'll notice that underneath the light button, there are three raised dots. This is to make it easier to distinguish uh, when you're not fully awake or what have you as to which one of these buttons is the light button without having to look. Now, it is, um, sorry, it does have a auto backlight, which all you have to do is tilt at a 45 degree angle, the watch forward and the backlight will come on. But I have that turned off, so you press the light button there, the light will come on. Uh, while I'm talking about the light, I might as well, since I'm here, uh, one of my big complaints with my golf Atomic Golfman that I have was that the light was too quick to turn off. Uh, apparently Casio has remedied that, that option um, and allows you to choose between a 1.5 second backlight and a 3 second backlight. I'll show you that a little later, but it's a nice add-on. Uh, obviously if you have the 3 second backlight and you plan on using the light a lot, you will burn through the battery much quicker. Another thing that I will note before I start going into the actual functions of the watch, um, here the screws 
are kind of loose. Uh, I asked around and apparently that's a feature of the watch, so it's not that they came broken, which is what I was originally considering. It's just a feature, so if yours does that also, don't worry about it. All right, and the last bit I will show you before I start getting into the functions here is the sensor. You'll notice the sensor does have a little protective plastic cover over it with some screws. Uh, it's a nice feature so you don't have to worry about damaging the sensor of the watch. And the last thing I'm going to talk about before actually getting into the features of the watch is the casing. It is a plastic casing with a slight metal band around the top here and the bezel which is metal and rotates. Uh, I've heard some people say it rotates rather stiffly. I haven't had a problem with it. It rotates fairly easily for me. I can do it with just my thumb as I'm doing the video. Um, the PRW2500 comes in several different variants. Uh, this is the standard variant. This is your black on orange with some white. Uh, they have a straight black on black. I've seen a black with a green. Um, yeah, depending on what color you get is how expensive it will be. Uh, this one, when I got it, I was stalking it on Amazon, waiting for it to come up under $200. Uh, it's a little cheaper now because they're, you know, Casio's coming out with the new models. This is an older model, but it's an atomic solar. So it's going to be a little pricier. Uh, so we'll get to the watch face here. Uh, since I did say it is an atomic solar, you will notice over here is the indicator for it received an atomic signal um, along the outer rim here. That is the solar panel, which will charge a battery. On a full charge, the watch will last approximately five months without further exposure to light. If you have the power saver function turned on, uh, it will last 23 months without further exposure to light. So what the power saver mode does is after 10 p.m. at night, if it's inactive for 60 minutes, it will turn the display off to save a little extra power. If it is inactive for six days, however, it will turn off all non-essential functions. So that means all the extra bells and whistles that you bought this watch for will be turned off and it will just keep the time. Okay, so the main reason I got this watch is because it does everything. But I also liked what I call the, the heads up display. The amount of information that you get on the watch on the home screen is incredible. Um, the only other watch that I saw that had this much information on it on the home screen was the PAW 1500. Now I went with this particular watch because it was slightly smaller. I have a very small wrist, so the Diameter of this watch was smaller than that of the PAW 1500 while the width was slightly larger I was okay with that because my atomic solar golf man uh, is a chunky watch. So this was nothing in comparison oh, So what we'll start to do is I'll take you through the home screen here uh, Like I said, there's a lot of information on here up here. You have the current day you have the date you have the title graph and if you look closely here, you might be able to make out the tide graph has three different settings. So you've got your below average, your average, or below average, average, and then your above average tidal height. Uh, those are easier to see if you have the watch, but I'm trying my best because lighting isn't great. Uh, obviously, you have the time here. Uh, the time is not very large in comparison to something like the PAW1500, but it's the same size as my Golfman, so it didn't bother me. Over here, you will see the power indicator, high, medium, and low. Power saver mode, that's turned on. Um, you have PM and DST for daylight savings time because it's currently daylight savings time. Here, you have a barometric pressure graph. Uh, you can see actually that the graph, it's kind of uh, rainy right now, but the weather is on the up. So you can see there's been a slight decline and now it's just evening out. Um, the barometric pressure graph, this graph is a total of 10 hours. Each of these lines represents uh, two hours, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, it, it's a nice thing to have, but personally, I look at the graph and I look outside and I just kind of go, okay, I can feel that the weather's changing already. And sometimes I can tell a little sooner than this, but that's just me. It's a nice thing to have. Over here, you will notice 
that is the indicator of if you received an atomic signal to keep the clock running on time. If you hit the adjustment button, you will change it so that the title graph goes away and it's replaced with the year and the date. I'll hit the adjust button again, bring back that. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cycle through some of the screens just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. First screen that you come to is the Tide screen. The Tide screen isn't as hands-off as I thought it would be. Uh, it is partially due to your programming of it. If you look down here, it defaults to the title information being at 6 a.m. You can change this. Uh, I have a website that I use. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, one nice part is you do notice that you still see the date here. I did forget to cover the moon up here when I was talking about the home screen. Uh, so this is your moon indicator, so it will keep track of the moon phases. Uh, also, I forgot to say that that indicates that I've muted it. Uh, the watch does have hourly charms and button indicators, but I don't like those, so I turned those off. Moving on to the next screen. This is your record. Uh, your altimeter has a record keeping. Uh, this is record number one. I have not had the chance to use it yet, so there's no record to show you. Sorry, guys. Moving on to the next screen. Here you have five daily alarms. Uh, here we're indicating that we're on alarm three, and if you use the buttons on the right, you can cycle through the alarms. Center button turns them on and off, and that indicates right there that the alarm is on. The one thing that I did not like about this in comparison to my golf man, the one position on the alarm in the golf man has a snooze mode. This particular watch does not seem to have that. I tried it, I couldn't make it snooze. So moving on to next, you've got your standard stopwatch. And right here, nice feature. Most of the screens you'll see, the time will always stay with you. All right, here you have your countdown timer. Uh, it does between 1 and 60 minutes. There are a few modes to the countdown timer. Right now I have it on the standard mode. So what this will do is, once it gets to about 10 seconds left, it'll start beeping, just going beep, beep, beep every second until you're done. If you push this button here, you can see this slightly different. What this does is, every, every minute, you'll get a singular beep, indicating that a minute has passed. And then once you get down to the 10 seconds, you will get that beep, 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 as you did in the other mode. Here you have world time. So I have it set for Tokyo because it's the furthest that I could think of. Here you have the world time. Here you have your current time. Uh, this is the receive. So this will tell you when your watch received an atomic signal. My watch received an atomic signal at 12.04 a.m. on 5.11. And we're back to the home screen. Now, on the home screen, you have different um, settings and adjustments that you can do. If you hold down the adjust button, all right, this will allow you to cycle through your local time. The next thing you can adjust here, you see it's flashing auto. That indicates daylight savings time. You can have it automatically do it, or you can have it on or off. Next, you can switch between the 12 and 24 hour. Here you can set the time. I'm working my way through the time. You can set the year, the month, the day. Mute, which is the button sounds. Ah, LT3. That is what I was referring to as the light. Uh, so you can have the either the 1.5 or the 3 seconds. Uh, maybe I'll fade to a showing of what the actual light looks like now. On the left, while it might be a little blurry, you'll see the Atomic Solar Golf Man, which does a light up of 1.5 seconds, and the Pro Trek on the right, which is set for 3 seconds. Also, not sure how well this will come out, but give you an idea of what the luminescence looks like and the face. And that's what the light looks like in comparison to the golf man. What we'll do now is power saver mode. You have on and set here. You set um, Fahrenheit or Celsius for your temperature and then back to your NYC, which is the closest place to me. And we'll go home. Now you may have noticed because the lighting's kind of off here. Uh, you can see some dust on the uh, 
the glass front here. Uh, the glass also does pick up fingerprints rather easily. I haven't had to worry about scratches so far because the bezel is high enough that it will prevent most things from hitting the face. Uh, now, what I'll show you is what you probably all want the, comp uh, the uh, watch for, and that's the ABC mode. So, we'll start off with the compass. The compass is a dual uh, duplex display, so you have an underlying display which is doing your degrees, time, and southeast versus east-southeast, uh, and then the line indicators at the top will be on a separate duplex screen. With the compass, you get a continual directional measurement for about 20 seconds. You do have options to set magnetic declination, correction, and it does have a bearing memory, which would be here. And I will just flash it back to the home screen and we'll do the barometer. Now the barometer will show you barometric pressure here, but it also does show temperature. And it will show here, but actually where's my little pointer? It will show up here if you're having a slight increase or a inc uh, drastic increase. Right now, not so much for me. Uh, the one thing I have noticed is with the sensor, obviously it's going to throw off your temperature if you're wearing it, or even if you touch it for like three seconds. I used to do it where I would grab the sensor and push one of the buttons, and that would skew the temperature by six or seven degrees just for the little quick time that I pushed, used it to help push on the buttons. Um, barometric pressure is fairly accurate. I mean, you're not going to get something perfect with uh, a watch like this. Go back to the home screen again, home screen again, and the last button here is your altimeter. So here you have an indication of plus above sea level and roughly what my altitude is. Um, it's, it's okay. I, I have zeroed it out. I've gone down to sea level several times to zero out the altimeter and every time I bring it back to my house it's between plus or minus five or ten feet. Uh, it, it's it's okay it's not gonna be perfect but keep that in mind you may have to zero it out a couple of times. Uh, the altimeter measures between negative 2,300 feet up to 32,800 feet and it does incremental units of 20 feet. Now what I should do is go back and go back to the compass because I want to say the thermometer there. The thermometer will measure between 14 degrees and 140 degrees. Now for most people that'll be perfectly fine. Just keep in mind if you're going to use the, comp uh, the thermometer Take it off your wrist, leave it sit somewhere for like 10-15 minutes out of the sun and you'll get a better measurement. Go back home. Uh, all in all, I like the watch. It was a bit pricey when I got it, but if you're looking for a good overall ABC watch and you're not looking to spend um, a lot, a lot of money on some of the other ABC watches that are out there, I would highly recommend giving this one a look. The last bit I want to show you is the watch in comparison to other sizes of, we'll say, a watch and some other things. Just because uh, the measurements that you'll find online may be a little, I don't want to say confusing, but you'll have nothing to compare it to. Here is a standard Atomic Solar Golfman to Casio G-Shock. So that's what the watch face looks like. Comparison thickness. Um, I did this with the G-Shock watch. I kind of grabbed some currency because that's the closest thing I could think of that you'll be able to tell how big the face is compared to something that you may have seen. So we'll start with US silver dollar. US half dollar. U.S. Sacagawea dollar, Canadian $2 piece, Canadian $2, Jamaican 
50 cent. $10 peso, I believe. One franc. And a Bermuda 25 cent piece. That's all the uh, foreign currency I have. Hopefully something in there is close enough to the region where you are that you'll be able to uh, kind of get an idea of how big this is. I'll also uh, fade to showing it on my wrist now. Give you an idea what it's like for a really, really small wrist. Here's an example of the watch on a tinier wrist. So if you were wondering what it would look like if you have a smaller wrist, that's an idea of the size that you'd be looking at for the watch. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.